Hello, welcome to chapter 5, section 2. We're going to be talking about properties of the quadratic functions. And we're going to be interchanging a couple of things. The title of the section actually says Property, uh, Properties of Quadratic Functions in Standard Form. And we'll talk about what standard form means. That'll be in the second video. But really, that's kind of misleading because what we're really going to be talking about will be properties of the graph of the function. And you remember from last week or the previous videos, we talked about the fact that the graph has special a special shape. It's called a parabola. And parabolas occur in a lot of different places. It actually comes from the uh, it comes from what we call a conic section, or it's part of a cone. I'll see if I can draw it. So if I have a cone, which kind of looks like a pyramid, except it has a round circular base. If I cut part of this off, and I cut it like this, and then I open that up and look at it, that shape that I have here, that's, that's the parabola. Of course, if I cut it from, not through the base, but from one side to the other side, I get an ellipse. And if I cut it parallel to the base, then I get a circle. There's also another thing called a hyperbola, but I'm not gonna draw that. These are the conic sections that, we've learned, that we'll learn about in analytical geometry. <laughs> For now, we're just gonna study the parabola. Okay, one important property of the parabola is that it is symmetric, which means that the left side, and since the parabola opens up or down, I'll say left and right, but the left side is exactly the same as the right side, just flipped over a mirror. They are reflections of each other. Um, I'm guessing that probably you have seen situations like that. So like if you see like perhaps like a butterfly like if a butterfly, you have like the wings of a butterfly. The left side and the right side of the butterfly are symmetric. People, humans are symmetric, all right? And usually what we do in class is we go around and we say who's symmetric and who's not symmetric. And it's, it kind of depends on like how people wear their hair. Until, pe and, uh, until it's, it's fun to do because then people catch on. Oh, he's talking about... Like me, I'm not perfectly symmetric because I always part my hair on one side. And then some people who pull their hair straight back or if they have really short hair and they don't do a part, then we say they're more symmetric than the others. To be honest, um, th like people and other animals and stuff, they're not actually perfectly symmetric. Um, like I know for me, and you can't see this because I'm not recording myself, but one of my ears is lower than the other ear. And guess what? Same thing with you, okay? You just probably haven't noticed it yet. So there, there's that going on. But in general, there's symmetry. Okay, you got a left hand, you got a right hand. You got a left foot, you got a right foot. You got a left ear, you got a right ear. Unless, God forbid, that there's been some sort of an accident or something, okay? But anyway, this idea of symmetry is something you've been dealing with for a while. Well, this parabola has symmetry. And if I draw a vertical line, which, and I'm going to say this, but it's not a good way of doing it. If I draw a vertical line halfway through the graph, it will show you what the mirror is. So like this side, if I flip it over this red dashed line, it matches up with this side. Okay, that line is called the axis of symmetry. All right, there's a couple of things that I want to I want to point out here with you, okay? And there, it's all up here. All right. First of all, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line. It is not a horizontal line. What does it mean when it's a vertical line? Well, first of all, all lines in algebra have equations. There's a whole branch of math about linear algebra, and we've done some of that already. When we did substitution and elimination, we were talking about linear algebra. 
And even in Algebra 1, when you guys learned about slope-intercept form and point-slope form, you were talking about equations of lines. So this is really important, and hopefully you get this. When it's your turn to tell me what the axis of symmetry is, you have to give it to me as an equation. You can't just give it to me as a number. And I'm going to do that with every example. And after doing every example, it's going to be wrong if you just give me the number. Okay? And I'll even show you on Desmos why, why we do, th do it that way. Okay? With some of the problems coming up later. Now, vertical lines all have the same x value. So each vertical line, no matter whether it's an axis of symmetry or if it's just a vertical line, all of them start like this. X equals, and then we put some number in there. Now, how do I know what the axis of symmetry is, what the equation of the axis of symmetry is for a quadratic function that's in point, um, sorry, ver vertex form? All right. Well, we know that the H and the K represents the vertex, HK. And the H is the X value of the vertex. And remember, it's not going to be an H. It's going to be like a 3 or a 5. Okay? It looks like this one's positive and negative. So whatever, whatever that vertex is, it's not going to be an H. It'll be an actual number. So that will be the X value of the vertex. The axis of symmetry goes through that vertex. So the X value of the vertex is the number that I put in here. So the equation is going to be X equals whatever H is. So let's do a couple of examples. And I got two of them here, okay? So the first one, the function is f of x equals 2 times x plus 2 squared subtract 3. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot that we can talk about. I know where the vertex is. I know that it's from the parent function. It's a horizontal translation. It's a vertical translation. And I also know about that too, which tells me it's a vertical stretch. All that stuff is stuff I already did. The only part I need now, the only part, what is H? Remember, um, vertex form is A times X subtract H squared plus K. The A is 2, the K is negative 3, but I don't care about either one of those for this one. The only thing I need to know is what's the H? And since I'm subtracting H and it looks like adding 2, my H is negative 2 because X subtract negative 2 looks like X plus 2. So wherever my graph is, and again, I know the vertex is at negative 2, negative 3, but wherever my graph is, the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. And the X value of the vertex, the H, is the number that I use. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so for this one, I have f of x equals x subtract 3 squared plus 1. Again, what's my h? In vertex form, it's a times x subtract h squared plus k. My a is 1, my k is 1, but my h is positive 3. I'm subtracting 3. I want to be subtracting h, so that tells me h is 3. So my axis of symmetry, x equals 3. And make sure not just negative 2. Not just 3. Remember, it's a line, and all lines have equations. 
So you have to tell me the equation of the of the line, the equation of of the axis of symmetry. So make sure you write the x equals part of it. And I will show you the some of the other stuff with Desmos as we get to it. Okay.